Welcome to the Fort Polk Podcast, your source for all things Army. Today, we are talking about the traumatic brain injury and the clinic here at Fort Polk that offers specialized care for service members who may have TBI or concussions. The Army takes this issue very seriously and encourages soldiers to get the care they need. Thankfully, Fort Polk has a TBI clinic dedicated to providing the best care for these injuries. Whether you are suffering from a mild concussion or a more serious brain injury, Fort Polk's TBI clinic is here to help. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are listening to this podcast, I'm Jeff England from the Fort Polk Public Affairs, and this is the Fort Polk Podcast. Today, I have with me Dr. Elise Leisinger. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks you're from for having over, me. You're from BJAC. I am. Yeah. BJAC, Bain Jones Army Community Hospital. You know they've been trying to make that a, uh, a clinic for a while now. Mm-hmm. They've been trying to downgrade. It's like, no, you can't do that. No, we, we you need don't it. Do that. Yeah. We need it. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, if they had a clinic, if this was downgraded to a clinic, would they have the OBGYN? Uh, I, don't, I don't think they would. Ward over there. Yeah. No. We no. We need it. We, we do. I think we need more than what we have now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And the uh, the VA clinic is way over in Pineville, and but we have a little clinic over here, and we need more doctors over there. Yeah, we do. We need more doctors everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. That's crazy. Uh, so, Dr. Leisinger, how's it going? I know. It's going I great. Asked. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's, uh, it's going to be like that uh, for just until, uh, you know, June, July, August, that time frame, then it just becomes like three feet from the sun. Oh, gosh, it's going to get hot out here. So we're going to have a traumatic heat injuries. That's true. Yes. That does happen. Yes, yes, it does. And some people will get a TBI as they fall from their uh, heat injury. Well, that would make sense. Right. Unless you're falling onto a bed. Which I like never I like, happens. I, oh, it happens to me every night. <laughs> <laughs> every night. My head hits the pillow and I'm out. Oh, that's I'm, good. Yeah. So uh, TBI is a traumatic brain injury. What exactly, uh, what is a TBI? So traumatic brain injury and concussion are the same thing. We use those words interchangeably. Concussion usually refers in the sports medicine realm. So that'll be more the football, soccer type thing is where they use the term concussion. Traumatic brain injury is what we use in the military world. That's kind of the term that we use for the same injury. Yeah, it sounds more serious. It does, yeah. And um, it can be scary for some people, but it's really a concussion you have that injury and you should heal from it, you know, without any long standing. You know, I don't know where I got the idea that the brain does not heal itself or it, it doesn't, you know, once it's damaged, it's damaged. Yeah. But, and there's still question about that. We really don't know 100 percent because the only way to study the brain is, you know, to take a piece of it out, which we don't do. Right. I a saw lot that of, in a movie. Uh, yeah. It was cannibal. No, Hannibal. <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) Um, So, you know, it's really hard to study the brain and there's not a lot of good animal models that correspond to the human brain. So the human brain has a lot of these different folds in it and and it's hard to find an animal that has it. So a lot of the traumatic brain injury research that they're doing now is actually using ferrets because they have more folds in the brain. So, Well, if you ask people around here, it's squirrels. Yeah. Because I, I hear that uh, squirrel brains are really good. <laughs> Maybe those are a little bit too small. <laughs> a little too small. The, you know what I found out is uh, the octopus brain is very odd or unusual. It's, uh, you know, like each tentacle is has its own brain and all that. It's, oh, yeah. yeah, it is so weird. Just yeah, if you're interested in finding a weird looking brain that the the octopus is oh, it's so alien. It's I bet it is. Yeah. It well, is. you'd have it's to crazy. have a lot of coordination for all those kinds Yeah, of it's, so. it's weird. But they're smart. Yeah. They are smart. So <laughs> But from a from like when we ask what is TBI, really it's Um, anytime you've had a blow to the head or the body and you feel out of it, that days confused, felt like you had your bell rung, saw stars type feeling. If you have had that after an impact, um, or after, you know, blast exposure or something like that, you've probably experienced a concussion. Oh, I'm sure I have. I I get that all the time. Stand up too quick and hit my head on the open door that I forgot what I opened. It's like, boom. Ow. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's, and I don't even know if I'm over exaggerating when I, when I stumble and stuff, it's like, am I just exaggerating for effect or uh, am I really, but I do this, I do see the stars and, and, uh, and then that's, then I get the headache. Yeah. But you know, if you feel better in a few minutes, that's fine. You know, you, maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but 
Um, it's really the people who are having like the dizziness, the balance, you know, in coordination, the headaches, and then feeling out of it for a little bit more, um, where they need a little bit more, you know, help to kind of recover. And really, like you said, just standing up and hitting your head, that happens all the time. The most common cause of concussion is falls, you know, slips, trips, and falls, even in the military. Well, in the Air Force, um, being a crew chief in the Air Force, um, an air, uh, airplane mechanic, uh, big, a big source of those is hitting your head on the plane. Yeah. And, and here we, <laughs> there's hear a lot of low high at the <laughs> motor pool, you know, there's, a, there'll be a door open. People aren't necessarily paying attention to that. Then they stand up and hit their head on that too. That yeah, happens. Yeah. That happens a lot too. Some people say that it knocks some sense into me, <laughs> but I rarely see it. <laughs> there's very few cents, you know, very few, maybe a penny. I don't know. <laughs> the, uh, so, um, so who you, we have the TBI clinic mm-hmm. at at BJAC, right? It's is so it's it located? Act, no, it's actually over by the FTMC. So the Red the Roof Inn. The FTMC. Inn, that's right. That would be the what? The Red Roof Inn. So the Red Roof Inn. You know Inn. that yeah, building? That's the, yeah, that's the 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 actually the civilian um, doctor uh, uh, employee health stuff. Um, yeah, it's close to that. So the FTMC is the Fontaine Troop Medical Clinic. So that's where a lot of the, that's actually, they service only active duties, but then there's four small buildings next to it where they have occupational health. That's the one. That's the word I was looking for. Occupational health. Yeah, it's right there. Ah, gotcha. Okay. So it's over there. Not even in BJAC because you guys are so special. That's right. You have to have your own building. There's too much, too much. Now, do you have a lot of business over there? I mean, we do. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty steady. So it comes, you know, it comes in waves. Um, if there's a big jump, we may get a group of people coming in or after live fire training, we'll get maybe a couple of people coming in. So it, it kind of ebbs and flows. Ah. Um, but we have a pretty steady um, flow of chronic concussion patients or people who are about to retire and want to get checked out after their lifetime exposure to things. Absolutely. Anybody that's retiring or getting ready to retire or getting ready to separate, make sure you have everything documented everything documented it will it will help you in the long run make sure it's all documented yeah and yeah. really you know if you're coming into the TBI clinic and you want to get things documented you can just be upfront and say hey i'm just here to get stuff documented and we'd be happy to do that from you know a head injury standpoint and if you're you know a lot of people don't even know what treatments are available for some of the things that they've been dealing with so we can always offer and then you can choose your own adventure from how much you want to engage in from the about to retire standpoint. Gotcha. Gotcha. So the, uh, basically the TBI clinic is servicing active duty only active duty only active duty, no retirees, no retirees, no civilians. No civilians. That's what, that's what active duty only means, right? That's right. No, <laughs> and no de- dependents or, uh, we will see active guard or people who are reservists, but they have activated. to be on orders. They have to be on orders. Yeah. Yes. And that, or title 10. So yeah. Yeah. I know these things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Title 10 means uh, active duty. Basically. But you know, if you are a family member and you've had a concussion, go see your primary care doctor. If your primary care doctor and is in the military system and they have questions about something that they're not sure of, they can give me a phone call. And I get that, you know, I've had a couple of phone calls from different primary care doctors who, you know, want to run things by me for kiddos or um, spouses who have been in car accidents or things like that. And I'm, you know, I'm very comfortable with TBI. So I'm very happy to kind of coach people over the phone from that standpoint. guide people in the, the yeah. right direction. So, um, if somebody had, if some, if one of our soldiers here gets a TBI, hits their head, has a fall, um, gets smacked upside the head with a two by four, um, jumps out of an airplane and lands wrong. Mm-hmm. How can they, how can they come see you? I mean, is there, what, what kind of referrals are there for you? Yeah. I mean, so we get people from, um, who have been referred to us through the ER, through sick call, through their primary care doctor. And we also take walk-ins. So we try to make it as easy as possible for people to come and see us at any time. If you're having, you know, signs that something dangerous has happened, like your repetitive vomiting, the worst headache of your life not able to really stand up after a concussion or you've had loss of consciousness that is going on and people are taking you to the, to the ER. Um, that's the place that you need to be. So going to the ER in those circumstances is the right thing to do. Cause we want to make sure that we're not missing something more dangerous, like a brain bleed. That would be really Ooh, what we're worried bleed. about. 
So what's it mean when you're uh, bleeding from the ears and stuff? So, you know, that could mean different things. What we really worry about with a concussion is bleeding within the brain itself. So bleeding from the ears, sometimes that can be like a tr- um, a tympanic membrane rupture. That's an or- eardrum eardrum rupture. So te- yeah. Doctors are so technical. <laughs> but the scalp also bleeds a lot. So you could just have, you know, a cut or a laceration on the scalp that is just, you know, pouring out too. So so what happens if there's like a, uh, well, what would they call that? Uh, it's a fluid mm-hmm. coming out of the ear, but it's not blood. Right. So you're talking about a CSF leak. Uh, that would be very rare, but yeah, that does happen. So cerebrospinal fluid, which is kind of that cushioning fluid that your brain and your spinal cord kind of sit in to help. And you actually make quite a bit of that every day. I just saw that on the on a TV show the other yeah. day. <laughs> He's got CF, CSF. No, right. they, no, actually, they they spelled it out. They, it was a, they got cerebral f- spinal fluid. Mm hmm. And it's like, isn't that what you is that what you pull for a spinal tap? It is. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. look at that. And that's for meningitis. It's for meningitis or or if you have any kind of autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis or any of those things, then yeah, you can do. I've done quite a few LPs in my lifetime, but not not in the TBI (laughs) clinic. (laughs) Well, the doctor has to do a lot of things unless you're like a philosophical doctor, then you're just a professor. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So you could be a doctor without being a doctor. You can. So yeah. they're, they're not really doctors. They're so, yeah, professors. So, yeah. So we say physician or or you can use provider if you're talking about MD a PA. Or, yeah. MD. So I'm a DO. A DO? Mm-hmm, which you're is a, a doctor of osteopathic medicine. Oh, for a second there. I thought you were a Simpson. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a doctor of osteopathic. Isn't that like bones and stuff? Um, so that would be orthopedics. Oh, so orthopedic. Start orthopedics, with an O. It does, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and OD would be an eye doctor, but a DO. It we are the same as MDs, but we also have other like manual manipulation skills, kind of like a chiropractor. You Ooh, think of. Yeah. So you're like a chiropractor on steroids. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I need to go see a, a chiropractor soon. So, and so I have to drive all the way out to Alexandria for that. Oh, one. yeah. That's where the VA is. Yeah. Well, our chiropractor here is wonderful. And yeah, we have a lot of our... see me. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I, I don't get the retired benefits until I'm 60. So oh, yeah. That's what happens when the National Guard retires. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. yeah. So you get all the... You get you get into what's called a gray area. Mm-hmm. And it's like you're retired. You get some of the benefits, but not all of the benefits. And you don't get paid. It's like, wait a minute. I put in my time. And it's like, no, nope, you don't get it until 60. Hmm. So... But that's another uh, that's another way to continue with your military career after you get out of active duty if you don't want to lose your your time in service. Um, so the uh, you're saying that it, okay, we're at home and I'm the active duty guy, but my kid uh, falls and hits you know they're they're skateboarding or something they fall and hit their head. Uh, luckily, they were wearing a helmet, but it was a hard fall, and you know he's he's got. Uh, headaches and mm-hmm. and dizzy and all that stuff. I wouldn't take him to the DB uh, the TBI clinic here on Fort Polk. Correct. You I, would take him. So if you're you know if it's on the weekend and you're worried about him at that time, you could go to the ER and get him checked out there. Um, and then you would follow up with your pediatrician or your family medicine doctor or family medicine provider so in the clinic. PCM mm-hmm. primary care manager. Manager. I call them PCPs. Yeah. Primary care provider. That's yeah. Either one or either one. is. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So we've got, so are all of the uh, TBI doctors over there, uh, DOs? Um, no. So I'm the only TBI doctor here. So you're so special. That's right. Yeah. So it's me. And then I have an RN, I have an MSA and then I have a neuropsychometrist, um, who does the ANAM testing. So she's kind of all these, all these initials and letters and stuff. So we've got, uh, PA is a physician's assistant. Mm-hmm. Uh, MSA? MSA is, oh gosh. Um, um, <laughs> She's the, she checks people in. She's the medi- medical support assistant. I medical think is what support it is. assistant. Uh, you have uh, PCM, PCP, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you got the PA, physician assistant, and uh uh, and then my nurse is an RN, so she's an a RN registered, registered nurse. nurse. Yep. And then she also works in an uh, NCM capacity, which is nurse case manager. So she can also help get like records. So if people have been admitted for brain bleeds and they're following up with me now, she'll help get all that stuff coordinated as well. Gotcha. So what's the worst uh, the worst TBI that you've seen in your life? Um, you know, it's hard to say worst because 
a TBI affects everybody differently and it just depends on, you know, what else is going on in that person's life. Um, I've seen, you know, people come in with an orbital fracture that also happened during the injury or they get their TBI and then they also get other things that happen with it. So, um, that's not fun. It's not. Yeah. Like depression and things can happen Uh, after TBI as well. Or, you know, they have a TBI and it's also during a super stressful time in their life. So there's just a lot going on. Now, if, uh, now if, if we injure our brain in certain areas, it can affect us differently. Like if I get hit on the front of the head, it can affect my, uh, uh, temper. So no, um, if, de- or if I get hit in the back of the head, it can affect my eyesight. You would think, right? But yeah. actually, no matter where you hit your your head, um, the injury because your brain is in that cushion and it's kind of like jello in this water. Yeah, it's but well the cushioned. inside of our brain or the inside of our skull is not nice and smooth. Exactly. So you have a hard skull, right, which is really protective. But once you push that against it the impact in the brain is dissipated. So it's not in the actual area that you get injured. So if you, let's say- So it's kind of like hitting somebody with a phone book. Kind of. <laughs> it would be like it would be like trying to like shake a bowl of jello and then hit it one way. It would still go everywhere. Like the whole jello would shake, right? The way that you get um, that, like you're talking about, if you were to have um, like a stroke that then cut off blood supply to the area that would impact that one specific region. Okay. But in concussion, you know, it has nothing to do with blood supply. It's just energy force. So it impacts the individual neuron and you have billions of neurons in your brain. So your, your brain will find different pathways. I don't know about billions. I'm kind of down to a couple thousand left. Uh, I'm pretty sure sooner or later, I'm going to get down to one lonely cell looking for a friend. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, look at this little neuron over here. I finally got time to read. (laughs) Then he breaks his glasses. And then, you know what? That's okay. They'll just rebuild. All those cells will just keep rebuilding the next turn. See, that's what amazes me. I don't know why I've I've thought for so long that the brain does not uh, heal itself. So it doesn't really. So you cannot, re, you can't really regenerate neurons. So when you think of healing, you think of like building a whole new thing and then there's nothing there. But what happens is your brain will heal those areas as far as like decrease the damage that there that is there but it kind of almost makes scars in that area so almost like if you cut the skin your skin will heal right it's healing but you still have an area where you can see that something has happened there Mm -hmm. the way that the brain works is it's like all these different pathways so if one road cuts off your brain is just going to find a different pathway to use and your brain gets good at doing that so Oh, is that why, is that why, uh, like blind people, can, uh, the other senses, uh, pick up the slack yeah. and, and do a really good job and exactly. And then you get like daredevil and guy. Yeah. yeah. Or if you, <laughs> if you do things like, let's say you're, you know, a right-handed person and you start using your left hand for different things, you'll actually build those connections to do that. That's muscle memory. It is. Yeah. But that's how it works, right? Your muscles don't work unless you're using your brain to fire them. So I don't know. My, my mouth tends to, to go overboard without my brain thinking (laughs) it happens a lot what were you thinking i have no clue (laughs) and your brain is still in charge of that (laughs) it's still in charge it just turned off there (laughs) out for lunch (laughs) so the um now uh you're saying tbis and concussions they're just the the words are interchangeable the injuries so what the um the acute uh you have minor concussions and acute concussions, which are severe or whatever. Uh, what kind of acute concussion care uh, do you guys have over at the TBI clinic? Yeah, so we so um, just to go over the terminology, acute means within the last seven days, subacute is in the last three months, and then chronic is over three months. And then you also have mild, moderate, and severe. And mild, moderate, and severe really doesn't have anything to do with how many symptoms a person has. It has to do with how long they were had loss of consciousness for or were out of it for. So mild is loss of consciousness less than 30 minutes. Moderate is loss of consciousness up to a whole day. And then severe is loss of consciousness over a whole day. So that's what mild, moderate, severe, and acute and chronic mean. <laughs> so just just because that's the world that I live in. The, uh, that pad right in front of you, if you, if you use that, 
it won't pound on the table. Oh, okay. So I'm much. sorry about no, that. It's, I'm sure people are sitting there going like, what is that noise? I talk with my hands a lot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I normally say that before we go on the air, but I forgot to mention that one. Um, but um, so, so how long does somebody have to be unconscious for before it's considered a coma? Uh, so a coma would... I'm sure it'd be longer than a day, but oh. you know, it just depends. I'm not sure exactly the definition of coma. Oh, me neither. Yeah. Coma. But the difference, if you're in a coma, you're not in my clinic, <laughs> but if there's a, but if you have an extra M, then it's just a comma. Yeah. And that's just a pause. Just a pause. So this would be like a pause. This a is, pause. This is so a it's, it's a coma with an extra M. <laughs> <laughs> not all my jokes are funny, but they are funny to me. Mm-hmm. And that's, just, that's all that matters. So <laughs> So all of my listener out there will uh, will sit there and go like, oh, no, not another corny joke. Great. <laughs> so I'm sorry that I interrupted you. The uh, the the acute coma care. Yes. Is- OK. So acute. So when somebody comes in um, with an acute concussion, say they had an injury within the last seven days, then what we do is something called the MACE, which is the military acute concussion evaluation. And that just gives us a baseline of how their processing speed is, their cognition, because a lot of people just kind of feel out of it and have a difficult time concentrating. And we just give you a number to see kind of where you are on the scale of, you know, how out of it you are. And then we do a a neuro exam and then um, we'll give you recommendations for return to activity. So people come in and get maced. That's right. Yeah, that's I mace everybody. I wish it was that easy for me. (laughs) It's like I can't see. You got maced. That's not what they told me it was. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> At, sometimes I'm telling people like, if you didn't have a headache when you came in here, you will have a headache when you leave because it's you know shining bright lights in people's eyes. And Same doing thing all here. Things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think I got my job? <laughs> the uh, so uh, now the what about chronic concussion care? So I also see chronic concussion. So chronic concussion is, you know, if you had a, a concussion anytime over the last three months. So whether it was three months ago or 20 years ago, we'll see you. And, um, you know, sometimes people come in and they're like, you know, I've had headaches for 10 years. I've been kind of dizzy on and off. I feel like I have no energy. It's not really anything specific that goes on with the chronic symptoms. But if you've had a history of concussion, sometimes a head injury is involved. And what we do is we look at all the things that you're experiencing and we go through each thing individually and we see how much of it is from concussion, how much of it is from other things. Cause there's a lot of other overlying things that can happen like obstructive sleep apnea, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, insomnia. Um, sometimes you can have just balance problems from eye issues going on too, or you have ringing in your ears and that's one of the reasons you can't concentrate. So you know, we kind of tease out each one of those things and give treatment for those. Now, it, can you see a uh, can you see a concussion on any kind of a MRI? No, or? there's no there's no neuroimaging and there's no lab that can confirm a concussion. Sometimes when we do an MRI, the brain will be able to see evidence that somebody has had trauma to the brain in the past but not everybody. And it's really not reliable on what kind of injury that you had would then lead to imaging findings. So they didn't find anything on my imaging. That's oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good though. Oh, they found some air in there. <laughs> like, oh wow. Airhead. There he is. <laughs> Answers a lot of questions, <laughs> but, um, the, uh, resources we have at Fort Polk, um, we have all kinds, um, now off post, uh, we have even more. And then you spread out to Lake Charles and, and Alexandria right, yeah. and, and we have even more. Uh, there is, we have the care, especially for our active duty. We have the care here. We do. Yeah. And we, and we can do it. So the, uh, so what are some of the resources we have at Fort Polk for? So at Fort Polk, um, we also have within the TBI clinic, we have our neuropsychometrist who can do some of the cognitive testing. We have a neuropsychologist who can do even more in-depth um, cognitive testing if somebody is really having a hard time concentrating or they feel like they can't remember things. Um, that's one of the things we can offer. We have an... Oc- you know, a lot of these, a lot of these, uh, these 
symptoms you're giving, it's, it's like, wait a minute, I have that. I yeah. have that. I have that. I have that. Do I have a concussion? I don't think I do. Yeah. there. I mean, that's one of the things that's so hard is that there are things that can affect people for a lot of different reasons. So we look at, you know, what else is going on? What other things do you have? Especially with COVID, you know, brain fog was a huge thing that's come up after that. that you I can have brain have smog. Yeah, brain smog. <laughs> yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so if you, you know, but for people who are thinking like, Hmm, I have all of those things and I have also had a history of concussion in my life, just come in and get checked out and we can really help. I don't even know if I had a concussion. I, I got in a car accident and you know, I rear-ended a big rig and, uh, you know, the bag went off and I did get, I did see injury on the, on my forehead, but I was never seen for a concussion or anything like that. Yeah, well, car accidents are absolutely one of the things that can cause concussions. Even if you didn't actually hit your head on anything, just that whiplash. That airbag. Oh yeah, yeah, I did get air. I did get uh, whiplash. But if you had that and you felt out of it, confused, dazed, you know, you could have had a concussion during that time. Yeah. Mm. How about months and years and years? Because I'm still, I have, I have no short term memory. I mm-hmm. have, uh, I have problems. Well, I have problems paying attention. Uh, I'm easily distracted. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, those are things that I think a lot of people deal with, especially with how reliant we are on technology too. That can be a big thing. Um, everybody's always checking their phone like 300 times a day. You have all these distractions going on. And if you have anything else like physical pain, you're not sleeping well at night, you're having any kind of emotional distress that will also affect your brain's ability to concentrate. So one of the things that we offer is something called neurocognitive rehab, which is a long word for teaching people how to remember stuff. And that's something that can really help. I was um, going to go to that class, but I forgot. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That actually happens, yes. So we try to make it easy for our patients and give them lots of reminders too. See, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, are lining up with ADD. They do, yeah. And I think ADD has become a very common diagnosis, a very popular diagnosis. And if you have true ADHD, you know that's been supported by psychological testing. You should probably get medicine. But if you don't, because of all the other things, because ADD can also just be distraction from all the other things going on in life that I just mentioned, um, then you can help by just instilling some different techniques and things that can help. You know, a lot of people will say like, I lose my phone all the time. I lose my ID card all the time. I lose my keys all the time. Just having like a system of putting things in the same place and, you know, always having that same routine, just something as simple as that can be really helpful. Humans are creatures of habit. Absolutely. And, and the brain does big, what the brain does. I'm a big advocate for that. Yes. <laughs> well, except for, except for like OPSEC and stuff, you know, you change up your routine every so often. Oh, right. Just yeah. To like, take a different route or to work. Take every, a different yeah. route to work. And, <laughs> and they'll help your neurons too. Yeah. So. <laughs> it, I, li- I do like trying to find different ways to places or trying to, I used to just go out before GPS and stuff. I would go out just to try to get lost, especially when I got to a new place. I would go out and just explore. Yeah. Just go out and look around. And that, you know, you, you learn a lot of new things when you go out there and, and just look around. And uh, instead of just going straight to where you need to go. Now, now it's just let me get to where I'm going. Mm-hmm. Let me get back home. <laughs> well, I have no sense of direction. So it may be an adventure no matter when I get in the car. <laughs> That's, I, people get mad at me when I give them directions because I use north, south, east and west. Oh, yes, yeah. Whereas almost everyone that I have to give directions to is uh, left, right. Yeah. Front, well, forward I, and backward. I grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina, so around Fort Bragg. And that place has the infrastructure is just all over the place. It's like a tangled web. And then I moved to Phoenix for um, part of my medical school and everything is a grid and there's South Mountain and there's, you know, it's it was so easy to navigate. Yep. It was such a big difference. Yeah. Growing up where I was uh, did, there was it was easy to tell uh, it was easy to tell where you or which face face which way you're facing yes, because exactly. the mountains were always north. Yes. Yeah. So you see the mountains that's north or northish. So you could say, okay, that's north, that's south. It was a, it was much different. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I'm always, and I'm always correcting people. It's like, okay, you go up north, down south, out west and back east. Oh, there you go. So you go up, down, out and back. See you, or you just <laughs> turn left at the Walmart. You can't do that. You have to turn west, <laughs> turn west on that street. At the Walmart. See, the the instructions I'm usually given, it's like, okay, you go down the street to the house that burnt down like five years ago. And 
<laughs> well, that's kind of how it is to get to the TBI clinic because the roads are closed for PT in the morning. Uh-huh. So a lot of our patients will call us like, where are you guys? How do I get to you? Because all the roads and Georgia Avenue is one way. So Look you can't for the water take tower. <laughs> exactly. And there's like three right there. <laughs> So if people wanted to get to get a hold of the clinic, should they, you do take walk-ins. So yes, I guess you don't have to worry about calling in for an appointment, but an appointment. You can absolutely. Hurt. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't hurt like a, like a concussion. Yeah. That can hurt. <laughs> but if you, if you are just interested, you want to know more, you can either ask your primary care doctor or you can give us a phone call. Um, I'll give the phone number is 337-531-3361. And you're located and you're also on uh, since you're part of BJAC, you're on the uh, the BJAC website. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. So you find the BJAC website and, and check that out. I think you can get to the BJAC website through our uh, our home page at home. Dom, home dot army dot mil slash polk. Then you go into the menu and look for BJAC. And that'll take you to the website. Yeah. And if you can't find a good phone number on there, just call their information desk and they can yeah. help, you, help you direct it to us. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, did you see a bigger, um, well, I'm sure you did, uh, when a deployment, when, when a unit gets, uh, redeployed back here, do they all come in like, no, not necessarily. I think, um, you know, we definitely sense the lull when there's not as many people around, but it's not like this huge wave that comes in. They kind of trickle in. Um, PCS season two, as people kind of PCS here, you know, we'll get some trickles in from there. Um, after rotation, after the JRTC rotations, we'll get people coming in after jumps. That's, you know, and if, if somebody had the, uh, the, symptoms but you know it's been a while because that's that's one thing that i would that's one thing that i would uh have assumed is you know i my i hit my head like months ago and i'm just getting the headaches and all that stuff and so that's one thing that i would have thought is well no it's too late for the concussion the concussion's healed already so it wouldn't be that but that's not true. I, can, I mean, not necessarily. You know, some people I'll get people who, you know, they got a concussion right before they PCS and then they finally get here and it's been two months. Um, you know, you're still in that window where you could still have some symptoms that are from the concussion and we just need to get you on the other side. So, you know, if you're having a lot of headaches, we can give you medications or give you advice on lifestyle things that can help with headaches. Um, and sometimes just making little tweaks like that can make a big difference. Or if you really are having a lot of dizziness or, you know, brain fog type symptoms, we can get you, you know, started on vestibular therapy, which is balance training with our occupational therapist to see where that dizziness is coming from and give you help with that. It's an inner ear infection. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the the three loops come in in the, yeah. in the inner ear. Well, you know, balance is actually really, really detailed. It's your inner ear. It's your brain. It's the way that you feel things, you know, your proprioception. It's your hearing. It's your vision. So we look at all of those things. If somebody's really having a hard time with, with dizziness with different things. Yeah. See, I get dizzy when um, when I'm tired or if I stand up too quick, mm-hmm. uh, if I'm drinking too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I have to make sure it's not any of those, right? Because that could, that does happen. But really the vestibular symptoms with concussion are going to be, you know, I turned my head in a certain way and the room started spinning or, you know, if you're in the motor pool and you're like checking vehicles and stuff in that like movement, you start to get some symptoms with that. Um, that's one of the things that you can look for and see like, oh, maybe I have something going on with my vestibular system. Now, on a day to day basis, you say you say you you get more people after a jump and after certain rotations or certain or certain things. Um, you do take care of anybody that's here on uh, uh for or deployed here to be trained at the JRTC? So the rotating units have their own embedded medical staff, Mm -hmm. but um, there was one unit recently that came in and they had like 12 or 15 people that were affected with concussion. Um, And we offered them appointments, we offered them support, but I really just coached their physician that was already with them. So you're offering the the correct help to to everybody that comes in, whether they're here, stationed here or... Yes, absolutely. If there were a mass cal or something, we would be right there. Oh yeah, that everyone comes together for something yeah. like that. <laughs> and um, the what are some of the most common 
sources of concussion? So the most common things that cause concussion would be falls, motor vehicle accidents, sports, and then training events. Other things that have the potential to cause concussions would be vehicle collisions, rollovers, blasts. If you are within 50 meters of a blast, anything that causes a direct blow to the head. And um, this one is kind of surprising, but exposure to more than one blast event. So if you're doing the large caliber, Carl Gustav's, you know, the, the army has its own things to um, regulations of how many you're supposed to fire in one day. But really exposure to even one or more of those can has the potential to cause concussion, depending on what else is going on with that person that day. I saw that on uh, Navy SEALs. It was a TV show, Navy SEALs. And uh, it was because they go out there all the time and they're doing they're always doing the battles and in door breaching and and all that. And it's started doing some major damage to his brain and TBI. And uh, so could that cause long term? It can. Uh, Yeah. So so there's impact injuries and blast injuries. So impact injuries, you're thinking of like the actual blow to the head and blast injuries. They're not really well understood. The TBI Center of Excellence, which is in D.C., is doing a lot of research on blast injuries. It's where a lot of their effort is right now. So we're learning a lot more about it, but it's not, you know, 100 percent understood. But yes, you will get typical concussion like symptoms with long term blast injuries and the breachers and the, the people that we have stationed here that are teaching and coaching and doing the safeties and are out there all day doing the live fires with them. Those are the people that can be affected. Oh, wow. Now, do you, uh, do you recommend, um, people that are in high risk jobs like that come in every so often or anything like that? No, because you know, there's, there's not one way to predict how somebody's going to respond to them. Some people can be around that and feel fine within, you know, a day or two of that. And some people after they have that, they, you know, really suffer and are in pain for several weeks. So it just depends on, on how you are with that. It's very individualized, but if you are doing the live fire training and you're getting exposed to it and you are having any symptoms, absolutely come in. Crazy. That's crazy. The, um, what is now, can you, are you, I know about, uh, HIPAA and all that stuff, but are you able to talk about maybe, uh, some of the more traumatic, uh, injuries that you've seen here? Um, yeah, I mean, so f- here, you know, we get uh, some blast exposure. We get a lot of airborne operation injuries. We get just everyday stuff like people doing PT and, and colliding into each other, <laughs> <laughs> going a little bit Playing too football. hardcore. Yeah, exactly. Frisbee too. Um, and then we also have car accidents, um, you know, people driving really fast, DUIs, um, jumps, yeah. jump. Yeah. Airborne operations. Now, how are they, are they when they land they're just, they fall over, uh, and hit their head or is it something, um, different? you know, it'll, it, it seems to be, and I'm, I'm not airborne, so I have never jumped out of an airplane, but no, air force, they'll air tell force me, lands the planes first. they'll tell me that they go feet, butt, head. And then if it's really windy, they get dragged. And Ouch. then sometimes that dragging, you know, they can hit their head on different things even during that too. Um, so that's, that seems to be the, the common feet, butt, head. Gotcha. <laughs> now my feet got a concussion. Yeah. Yeah. My feet, my feet get concussed every day. I have bad feet. Yeah. <laughs> I have bad well, we have a podiatrist. Uh, we check for that. <laughs> I, I do see the, I do see a podiatrist every so often. So, and, uh, he just looks at me funny. It's like, oh, you, but at least they're, at least they're still there, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> that's a good thing. So we've got, uh, the resources at Fort Polk, you've got audiology and yes. optometry and, um, the neurocognitive, um, rehab. Yes. What, and that's for that's for teaching people how to remember things. So like, when oh, yeah, you have I that forgot about fog, that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we have a speech therapist, actually, who is telemedicine out of, out of San Antonio. So she's in San Antonio, but you come to the TBI clinic and you talk to her over the computer screen. Well, that way you could read her lips. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, nobody's wearing the mask anymore, but no. at the time you could take your mask off. <laughs> yeah. uh, and and you have one for BH. What is that's right? What is BH? BH is behavioral health. Behavioral yes. health. I'm gonna have them in here. You know, Good. Great. Uh, get the because you know TBI brain injuries. You know, if you get sick or something, or if something's 
hurting or broken or aching or or if something's not quite right, you go see the doctor about it. And you, or even if everything is right, you still go in for a regular checkup and you make sure that everything is is good and still going good. You know, BH or behavioral health, um, uh, mental health clinic, they're all it's just another doctor to Absolutely. make sure that we're staying healthy. So you need to get rid of that whole yeah, and uh, it's, it's stigma of of that kind of thing being bad. And your behavioral health is hugely important to your brain, right? So if, you, if you're talking about brain health, to have a healthy brain, you have to have good emotional and behavioral health. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the Army Wellness Center. Yes, Army Wellness Center offers a stress management class and a healthy sleep class. So if you're having difficulty with sleep or just stress management, um, one of the things that they offer that's really unique is biofeedback training. So you'll do the stress management class, which is in a group setting. You'll learn different things like breath work, progressive muscle relaxation, those types of things. And then you can do a one-on-one appointment with them for biofeedback training to find the exact right technique for you that helps with that stress. Gotcha. And physical therapy, physical therapy for a brain injury? Yes, absolutely. So physical therapy, you know, after you've had a brain injury, especially if you have like a whiplash type thing, you'll have a lot of neck pain with that. And neck pain is one of the most common sources of headaches. So if you're having a lot of headaches after some kind of injury, one of the things that we have to look at is, is it coming from the neck? Wow, we should see a DO to get our back adjusted. (laughs) That's right, exactly. (laughs) And um, of course, the neuropsych testing. Yes. That's that's to make sure that everything's, all the neurons are firing properly. Exactly, yes. And then uh, off post down in, uh, off post, but in town. Yes. In town, you got the uh, uh, sleep study. We have, yep. Mm-hmm. And there's one here in uh, Leesville and there's one out in Alexandria. That's right. And uh, then we have the ENT, which is ear, nose, and throat. Yes, that's both in Leesville and Alexandria. Actually, as well. the ENT is at the same place as the sleep study. It is, yes. It is. It's in the front. And uh, they also have ENT up in um, Alexandria and uh, Shreveport. And yeah, those are, those mm-hmm. are kind of more common than. Uh, other places. Uh, but off post in the drive, you got uh, neurology. Uh, they've got those out in Alexandria. That's right. We, yeah. Uh, our patients who do see neurology will either go to Alexandria or sometimes we'll send them to San Antonio to see the active duty neurologist. Ooh, mm-hmm. Nice TDY. That's right. Go to the river walk, get some nice, get some real food. Yeah. You'll feel yeah. much better after that. Yeah. yeah nice. <laughs> uh, and then you have neuro op, uh, optometry, neuro yes, optometry. That's right. So it's the optometrist or ophthalmologist who has done special training in the eye changes that happen with concussion. Is that where the, uh, the uh, dilated pupils or the pinpoint pupils? And that's right. That's when you, they shine the light in your eyes. And that's, yeah. See if Again, eye, if, if you didn't have a headache change, before, you will after that. You but will yeah, after. Because the, the eye health, one of the things that happens after concussion with the eyes is that you can have difficulty focusing. So it's that transitioning of looking close and then looking far. So that computer work that a lot of people do. The more you talk, the more I think I have a concussion. <laughs> so we look at that. And if you have that, then we sometimes will recommend that you you go see the specialist in that, which is the neuro ophthalmologist um, and also the occupational therapist, because that is also part of that dizziness that some people will get. That's amazing. You just all kinds of help. Yes. All kinds of help. We want to take care of our soldiers. Make exactly. Sure that, that they're all in the top notch health uh, and want to make sure that we get them the help that they need or maybe that they don't know they need, but they need it anyway. Yes. I love telling people about what resources are available and, you know, you've been dealing with this problem for 15 years and now we can help you with it. And it can be really life changing for people and it's very rewarding. Well, that's very cool. And the, uh, uh, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, crazy. I should write things down. I have a problem with my short term memory. Yeah, every time I have a patient at the front desk who takes out his notebook or his phone to put the appointment down, I know I've won that one. I put it in my phone, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Everything, if it's not in the phone, it doesn't go, it's not going to (laughs) happen. Dr. Elise Leisinger, thank you very much for coming in. Um, That's what I was going to ask is the... uh, there's a TBI month, uh, awareness month, correct? Yeah, that was March. That March, was March was brain injury awareness month. Well, next yes. next year we'll have to get you in a little yeah. earlier and we could talk about uh, any special things that might be going on okay. during the TBI month. I appreciate you coming in. I really, really do. Uh, 
Dr. Leisinger, over at the Traumatic Brain Injury Clinic, which is over by the Red Roof Inn. Uh, that's Georgia, isn't it? It's 3507 Georgia Avenue. Yeah. And you got a phone number? 337-531-3361. Sweet. So if anybody... Uh, knows anybody or has you know you bump your head or anything like that come on over it's not going to hurt yes much (laughs) come on over (laughs) well thanks for tuning in i appreciate everybody i'm jeff england with the fort polk public affairs office and you've been listening to the fort polk podcast and we will be listening at you later 